Anyway, my name is Jerry Wall, and uh, I'm a big hunter, love hunting, and I took up taxidermy because I love to do the work, and it's fun, something to do in the wintertime. So if you have an animal that you have shot, say in Africa, like these are, you can have your taxidermist or the taxidermist can get with Alumalite and keep your skull that you had from the animal. Like these skulls here, this is a kudu, and this is the skull cap that was made by Alumalite. This is the skull now that I can still use after I mount the animal so it can be shown along with the animal. So instead of destroying it, you still have the part that you can, the skull that you can put underneath. These are the uh, molds that they use to pour that chemical in to make your skull cap. So this is a, a good way of still keeping, preserving your skulls and uh, showing your skulls along with your, your mounted animal. We want to show you two different ways on how we help Jerry make these skull caps. First was a smaller animal where we were able to make a block mold by simply claying up the bottom, sealing the horns and the skull, making a conformed mold box to the shape of the horns to minimize on the silicone that was required to make it. Then simply mixing and pouring the rubber over the skull. Once the silicone cures, remove the mold box, remove the original, clean out the Vaseline that we used to seal the skull, mix up some RC3, and slowly pour it into the mold. The RC3 will start to cure within two to three minutes and be ready to demold within 10. Once demolded, you have an exact replica of the skull cap and you're ready to mount your horns. When we look at doing a, a larger skull, where it would not be efficient to make a block mold, we're going to walk you through the process on how to paint the silicone on and then utilizing a mother mold to support the bladder mold. First, we need to seal the horns and the porosity of the skull with Vaseline. Mix up a very small coat that we'll, we will use as a skin coat and brush on to get all of the exact detail of our original. Once that cures to a tacky stage, approximately an hour to two hours into the process, we mix up a second batch, which we then add thixotropic additive, which makes the silicone into a consistency that we can paint or brush on to build the thickness. We then add some locators in the back and get ready to make our mother mold. Here we're using a Lumilite shell. This is a lightweight two-part material that once mixed goes to a thick state that can be brushed or applied onto the silicone and will cure within a few hours. We do the same thing for both the front and the back to make a two-piece mother mold for our silicone. Once the shell cures, we remove the mother mold demold the silicone and place it back into the mother mold to get ready to pour. To cast a piece we're going to use the Ultralight 400. This helps when pouring bigger volume pieces because it's highly filled with microbloons. When you open the containers the microbloons settle or float to the top. You'll need to mix those in thoroughly before measuring out your A side and your B side prior to mixing and casting. The Ultralight 400 cures in approximately two to three hours in which you're able to demold your exact replica of your skull cap and once again you're ready to mount your horns. Here we've used Illumilite's RC3 Shell High Strength 2 and Ultralight 400 for making skull caps. But taxidermy applications can use any of these and also Illumilite's rigid foams as well as flexible foams as well as the Flex Series to make flexible soft tissue, ears, noses, and that for different taxidermy applications.
If you have questions on any of the materials for taxidermy applications, please give us a call. We'd be more than happy to help you out.